morning and welcome to our devotion, the devotion as we begin our Wednesday. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So we're going to go back a few days. Um, originally, I was planning to discuss St. Simon and Jude on Friday, which was October 28th. That's the feast day of Simon and Jude apostles. Um, but then I had to be somewhere else on Friday, so... Michael was kind enough to read a devotion, but now we're backtracking and thinking about Simon and Jude today. And so we'll read the propers for saints Simon and Jude. <clears throat> and so the Old Testament lesson appointed is from Jeremiah chapter 26, the first 16 verses. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, this word came from the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak to all the cities of Judah that come to worship in the house of the Lord. All the words that I command you to speak to them, do not hold back a word. It may be that they will listen, and everyone turn from his evil way, that I may relent of the disaster that I intend to do to them because of their evil deeds. You shall say to them, thus says the Lord, if you will not listen to me to walk in my law that I have set before you, and to listen to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I send to you urgently, though you have not listened, then I will make this house like Shiloh, and I will make this city a curse for all the nations of the earth. The priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. And when Jeremiah had finished speaking all that the Lord had commanded him to speak to all the people, then the priests and the prophets and all the people laid hold of him, saying, You shall die. Why have you prophesied in the name of the Lord, saying, This house shall be like Shiloh, and this city shall be desolate without inhabitant? And all the people gathered around Jeremiah in the house of the Lord. When the officials of Judah heard these things, they came up from the king's house to the house of the Lord and took their seat in the entry of the new gate of the house of the Lord. Then the priests and the prophets said to the officials and to all the people, This man deserves the sentence of death, because he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Then Jeremiah spoke to all the officials and all the people, saying, The Lord sent me to prophesy against this house and this city, all the words you have heard. Now therefore mend your ways and your deeds, and obey the voice of the Lord your God. And the Lord will relent of the disaster that he has pronounced against you. But as for me, behold, I am in your hands. Do with me as seems good and right to you. Only know for certain that if you put me to death, you will bring innocent blood upon yourselves and upon this city and its inhabitants. For in truth, the Lord sent me to you to speak all these words in your ears. Then the officials and all the people said to the priests and the prophets, This man does not deserve the sentence of death, for he has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. <clears throat> it's kind of interesting here. The, all the people were upset at Jeremiah, not because he wasn't speaking the truth, but because they didn't like what he was saying. <laughs> it, it, the, the question wasn't, is this really a message from God? The question was, is he prophesying against the city? Because if he is, we don't like that. And I, I think that it's interesting to note, what are the people upset about? If they were upset that he wasn't speaking the truth, that would be reasonable. They would be right in rejecting a, a message that is untruthful. But that was not the problem. And I think so often when people reject the proclamation of a church or a pastor or any Christian today, the question isn't whether it's true or not. The question is whether or not they like what they're hearing. Um, in any case, we move on to the epistle lesson uh, appointed for, for this uh, feast day. Blessed 
uh, excuse me, First Peter 1, 3 to 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. And then we consider the words of John 15, beginning at verse 12, in which Jesus says, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you, that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. If the world hates you, know that it has hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will also keep yours. But all these things they will do to you on account of my name, because they do not know him who sent me. And again, we're considering Saints Simon and Jude, apostles. We'll continue with the intro it. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exalt in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. And we pray. Almighty God, you chose your servants, Simon and Jude, to be numbered among the glorious company of the apostles. As they were faithful and zealous in their mission, so may we with ardent devotion make known the love and mercy of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And once again, thank you for joining us for our devotion. The Lord be with you throughout the day ahead. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah.